Welcome to a brand new episode of Spill It. Spill It is a show where I get to speak to inspirational people and share some inspirational stories to connect people together, inspire others, and help people learn something new. My name is Marcus Wright, and I'll be keeping you company for the next few minutes or so whilst my amazing guest waits patiently in the green room, ready to come out and say hello to all of you fabulous lots, because this is episode 71, Big Strong Man, and my guest, Christopher Finnegan, will be joining us at 7.10pm, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. When you come into here, make sure that you have liked, you have commented, and you have shared. There are three simple things that I ask for. So, you know, you don't have to do them, but it just helps me out if you do. If you like this post and you share it, it means that the algorithms of Facebook and YouTube and Twitch, they push it out to more and more people because that's how algorithms work on the interweb, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, and anyone in between, that's how the internet works. Uh, But then also, if you give a comment, it means that you can be part of the show as well. We get to interact with you, and then obviously you can have your questions asked live on air. Just like uh, Marie Kate Taylor has joined, saying hello. Hi, Marie. Thank you so much for joining. It is so nice to see you. What a great episode that we had as well. Guys, if you haven't checked out the episode between me and Marie, make sure that you go and check that out as well. If you haven't checked out all the other episodes, then you can do. All you ever have to do is head over to the Spill It website. That is www.spillit.uk. And you'll be able to have a catch up on all of the episodes that we have done so far here on this little channel of mine. If you're wanting to have access to the podcast, then you can do as well via the website where you stream pretty much anywhere where you can actually stream your podcasts. So your three main ones, Amazon, Spotify, Google, Apple. That's four main ones. I said three. That's, you know, we're going with four. There's also Audible. There's also CastBox. There's a load more other streaming platforms out there. Basically, anywhere you can listen to podcasts, you will find me. All you, have to, all you ever have to do is just search for Spill It UK Podcast, and there I will be in my great glory with a big smile on my face. I won't. My, my photo's not on the uh, on the logo. <laughs> But you will see me there. You will see all the work that I've done. So, yeah, just head over to the website, www.spillit.uk, and you'll be able to see all of the episodes that we've done so far. There are all lo- loads more other things as well that you can do over on the website. So make sure that you go and check it out. Keep those comments and questions rolling through. It is super important that you do that because I want you part of this show too. You guys are connecting with me and my guests you guys are my inspiration and you guys are learning something as well. So make sure you keep those comments and questions rolling through. Okay, are you ready for a little bit of tea? Because I am. I've got my tea ready for you. I do indeed. Because it is tea time. That's right, it is tea time. This is a section where I get to just talk about the stuff that I want to talk about because you get you get a whole lot of time with my guests and I get hardly any time with you guys. So this is tea time. And I've actually got some really... I mean, it links really, really well with today's episode as well. Let's get it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Okay, here we go. 
Super Gay. That is the title of my tea article for today. Super Gay. <laughs> Um, right, yeah, so super gay. You may have heard, you may not have heard, but I'm going to inform you anyway. But Superman, oh, I mean, all over, all, it's been all over social media. I've seen it loads. Uh, the news article is going, Superman is now gay or Superman is now bi. No, Superman's son in the comics has come out as bisexual. Congratulations. Welcome to the team. But so Superman's son has come out as bisexual. And it has taken the media by stop. The media have jumped all over there saying that uh Superman is now gay and it's not like he's he's not. Uh, but then also you get all of the like the older generation you know, people that are like, oh no, you like he was he's supposed to be like this big hero, and what's he gonna do now? And why why have they changed the canon of the story? And oh, who's he gonna go out for now? Lewis Lee? Well, no, firstly, 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 Keith. <laughs> Keith, firstly. Why would you go after someone that has this like similar name as your mother? That's just weird, you know. Let's get our head out of the sand, right? He it's his son who is bisexual, and no, he's not going to go and find someone that has the name that sounds like his mum. I mean, he might do each to their own, but probability not quite. But anyway, the reason why this links so well with this episode is because Mister Mister Gammon himself. Nigel Farage has jumped over this. Nigel Farage, for those who don't know, for those who live like outside of the UK, he is not, in my opinion, he is not a very nice individual. He might be, you know, he might have a nice, uh, he might have a nice personality. We might, you know, bond over a beer or two. I don't know. But uh, the things that he comes out with, his ideologies, etc., et are not great let's say he was on record and saying now there's a video on this circulating by like on youtube and on facebook and, and other places so you know feel free to have a look have a listen to it but he goes on record to say that superman was an alpha male and because of that the alpha male species is now dying out and you're not allowed to be alpha male, alpha male anymore. Firstly, Nigel Farage and alpha male shouldn't be coming out in the same type of sentence. You can go back into your box about that, Mr. Farage. Secondly, Superman flies around in blue spandex wearing his underwear outside. If that's not gay culture, I don't know what is. But third, no, there's no such thing as alpha male. This was a, a system that was basically put in place years and years and years ago to kind of warrant this type of behavior. And I'm not about it. I'm not about that whatsoever. The world has evolved past Mr. Farage's stupid mindset, let's just say. And there's obviously other people out there that, that believe in this alpha male type of man. And it, it's just, it's absolutely bizarre. And I, I'm just not about it. And so I thought it was really, really fitting to fit this into this conversation that we're going to be having with Chris, because we're going to be talking about toxic masculinity. And al the, the term alpha male and the thoughts about what an alpha male is really does feed into this toxic masculinity and i'm sure that chris will have a lot of things to talk about when it comes to this which we'll ask him as soon as he gets out on the show but what are your thoughts what do you think about this whole situation let me know hit me up in the comments drop a comment be part of this conversation with me because i for one i'm seriously pissed off with mr farage sticking his gammon neck into everybody else's business when it doesn't need to be there just take your weasel self and go and uh, get in the sea because I'm I'm not about it. I'm not about that life. No. Moving on, Spill It Gaming will be launching. So we talked about this like way back in the day, and it just never happened. But Spill It Gaming is going to be launching as of next week. How crazy is that? So yeah, 
spill it gaming i'll be heading over onto my twitch channel because this streams out over to twitch but i'll be spilling uh, i'll be spilling it whilst also gaming over on twitch i i'm coming up with my own little rota because i do a lot of online gaming anyway and it just makes sense to kind of stream that and just have a conversation with people as well it just it just all it all fits together so yeah you'll be able to catch spill it gaming if that's what you're into as of next week so make sure that you check out the schedule that we posted this weekend for spill it gaming and last but not least the website has finally been updated i'm so sorry for the delay in updating the website but all of my guests for november are now up on the website so you'll be able to go and check them all out see what we're going to be discussing this month and also don't forget that you can have a direct link with my guests websites or email addresses or social media platforms whatever they want to share with with me to share to you you'll be able to find all of that on the website as well so just head over it's www.spillit.uk and that ladies and gentlemen was my tea for today <laughs> Nail on the head from Leela right here. Alpha male status is often a smokescreen that is used to hide other traits. I love that, Leela. You're so wise. I love it. But you're right. You are completely right. And uh, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into the whole alpha male uh, conversation and how that feeds into toxic masculinity. Because toxic masculinity is what we are going to be talking about this evening right here on Spill It. My guest is waiting patiently to come out into the stream with me into the studio. Please, can you give a nice Spill It welcome to my fabulous guest of the evening. I'm going to call him a friend of mine because, you know, I think we've bonded. Here he is. It is Mr. Christopher Finnegan. Hello. You called us friends. That's so I nice. I did. I did. I, do. I see you as a friend as well, Marcus. We have had a little bit of bonding. That's really nice of you. Thank we you. have. We have. I may have to retract that at some point, though. You know, we'll do, we'll play it by ear. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get a verbal you'll get a verbal and written warning first don't worry <laughs> no worries i won't i'll, I'll definitely remember that I'll, I'll remember. <laughs> hi everyone and spill it well love to you thank you for having me on again marcus no um, problem because yeah you're a returning guest aren't you i am i'm very honored we were on earlier this this year with the other two members of the growth house and uh yeah i've been very very honored and blessed to be asked back again i'm very very grateful thank you yeah because it's quite rare actually i don't really normally have returning guests normally i have like you know individual people every single week with a different story to tell however you guys have started this new project uh within the growth house and it is something that needed to be talked about and to be fair this is something that i've wanted to uh, to discuss for a long time now about to uh, toxic masculinity, about the patriarchy, about the patriarchal society that we live in. And I saw the projects that you've been doing and I just thought, yes, this, this is something that we can both discuss. And before we get into all of that, what are your thoughts about Mr. Farage and his view on alpha, the alpha male species dying out? I mean... Firstly, fair play to Superman and Superman's son. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, it's 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 been a long time. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big comic book fan myself, and you know, a big part of that that part of society. I absolutely adore. Grew up in it, and gaming as well is a big part of me. So I, I'm, you know, it's nice to see more. And you're seeing a push for that more and more in gaming and in in comic books, in manga, more of a press for more female characters, more LGBTQ plus uh, characters as protagonists. So good for them. Um, as far as Nigel Farage p picking that up, why why are you in this conversation? Why did you, who asked you to pipe up, mate? You know what I mean? Who put exactly who? Me and you. Do you know what I mean? Like why? What have you got to talk about? I mean, you said it lovely. As far as the uh, conversation surrounding Alpha goes. Why are you in this conversation? Because he's absolutely nothing like the the what you would think of when you think of Alpha male. He doesn't have a lot of the traits. You know, comes across very weaselly. Comes across mm. very 
slimy and isn't jacked beyond belief and isn't the ladies man and isn't all of this kind of stuff it's like no well firstly you're not so shut up like i like what you said go just go into the sea yeah. <laughs> just get, get in the sea just go get just in get in that sea but it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous and layla you said it beautifully um alpha male status is often a smoke screen that is used to hide other traits well i think that's exactly what alpha male is the the what what we associate to the term alpha in modern society represents all of those things that we don't that we don't celebrate anymore in men or at least in a certain part of society in, in forward thinking a lot of liberal circles uh you know that's it's something we we don't like it, against feminism against human rights it's something we're trying to kind of uh disseminate and remove from society it's you know it's a horrible thing um it's a, it's leading a lot of people into really dark places in their life and by no means is, does it affect just men it affects everyone in in at least western society i try and limit my conversation surrounding this subject to within the uk and especially mm -hmm. within the, the places we're from because I can't start talking about places in other parts of the world. I can only speak from the experience that I've had and the of course. education I've had from the people that surround us. But yeah, I don't see why he has anything to do with that conversation and should keep his Zen quiet, horrible man. Yeah, I I mean, there's, there's a time and a place to say certain things and to kind of chime in. And when something as progressive as a, a brand new LGBTQ plus a character has been written into a very well-known comic book that's progress that's where we're moving towards that's what we want we want inclusion and to have someone who as you quite rightly said is basically just a, a really slimy weasel using that using this progress that we're making and twisting it into his own little manipulative way to rile up people who you know, might feel a bit insecure about their masculinity. And it's taking something away that doesn't, it didn't need to be taken away. He could have stu stood back and celebrated this, but he didn't. What he chose to do was fill it with this vile, toxic energy. And just it, was just, it was unnecessary. Gaslight everybody into yeah. making something about it what it absolutely isn't it has nothing to do with that but i don't know that's a part of toxic masculinity hijacking conversations and going well i think this well you're talking from a point of view that is ignorant and, and not very well educated but i think he's used to that we're used to that kind of behavior from him isn't it well how many billion was supposed to go to the nhs is that oh, well yeah <laughs> i don't think so i don't think drinking my purple tea thank you very much <laughs> Not at all. But before we start getting into the conversation about toxic masculinity, the patriarchal society that we live in, I'm ready to play a little game. Are you ready to play a game with me? Ready to play the game. Let's do it. It is this or that. This or that is a game that I play with my guests. It's a little bit of an icebreaker. Feel free to play along at home as well. If you are listening to this as part of the podcast and you're driving your car, feel free to shout out the answers as you see fit. I can't hear you, unfortunately. I wish I could hear you, but I can't. But just feel free to play along anyway. Guys, if you are watching this at home right now on the live stream via Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, feel free to type in your answers and we can discuss it at the end of the game. It is a simple game. I'm going to ask you two things. Would you prefer this or would you prefer that? And you just answer on honestly and quickly. Let's do it as a quick, fast-paced thing. First answers only. <laughs> Steven's watching from the bath. I just wanted to bring that up. Steven. Okay. Live your best life, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen, for watching from the bath. Uh, Stephen is a regular tune-inner, tune-inner, watcher. I don't know. <laughs> he tunes in every week. Thank you for watching, Stephen. Uh, make sure that you're playing along. Don't drop your phone in the bath, though. That would be uh, quite awkward. Don't do that. Don't no. do that. Don't do that. Right. Are you ready to play, Chris? I am ready. Let's do it. This is this or that. Number one, early bird or night owl? Night owl. Night owl. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I agree. Introvert or extrovert? <laughs> oh, I'm such an introvert. No, definitely extrovert. 
I think for me, it depends on the situation. I can be, I can be a very introverted extrovert at times. So, yeah, I know what you mean. Until we, we absorb energy in a room, yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. Football or rugby? Neither. <laughs> you have to choose one, though. Football. <laughs> um, yeah, lads, lads, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Sci-fi or fantasy? Oh, fantasy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know what that noise was. I'm sorry, it's pressure. There's a moment in one of the Growth House interviews where I go like this, oh! and underneath in the subtitles, it just says elk sound. <laughs> uh, numbers or letters? Letters. Mm-hmm. Sure. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars, always and forever. Cannot compete. <laughs> Washing the dishes or doing the laundry? Why? Um, oh, I'm gonna have to say washing up. Okay. <laughs> so bad. There's there's uh, there's cutlery in the sink right now. I just can't do cutlery. <laughs> stresses me out. Snakes or sharks? Sharks. Why sharks? Because snakes are fascists. <laughs> Evil things. Horrible. I mean, no disrespect to the snake population. Love to them. <laughs> All blessings. But not for me, thank you. Not for me. Sharks are misunderstood. Snakes just look evil. Yeah, I mean, we're not we're not uh, saying anything bad about these viewers who are snakes. Uh, all of our snake audience who are listening into this this evening, we have full respect for you. Thank you so much. For Lizard listening. people are welcome any day. Exactly. Thank you for tuning in, lizard people. Orange juice or apple juice? Orange juice. Nice. Sunrise or sunset? Oh, uh, sun sunset. Let's go with that. More romantic. Yeah, it is. And your last one for the evening, pen or pencil? Pen. Pen, because it's hard to scribble out. It's hard to scribble out. It is it's writing technique. When we when we do creative writing, if we're working with young people on creative writing, I said, don't scribble out anything. I don't care if you write the same word next to each other. I want you to pronounce everything. So they'll say something like, and then I I pa, 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 I full stop prepared for the inevitable. And I'm like, yeah, man, fair play. Add something to it. Pen always. Okay, I know I quite like that. That's, that's good. That's good. Okay, so I know who you are. And there'll be actually some people who may remember you from your episode with Matt Kinn talking about, you know, the growth house and who you were all, where it all got started and where it's all going, etc. However, you know, it's been a while and we might have some new viewers or listeners who don't know who you are. And for those people and a reminder of those people who do remember you, because now you're flying solo, who the heck are you? Um, I am Christopher James Francis Finnegan, proud Mancunian, born of Irish Irish descent. Um, yeah, I, I'm an actor. I'm a I'm a writer. I I create theatre and I lecture in different drama schools around the UK. Uh, I recently ticked off two very big things on my bucket list for schools. I'm very proud. Uh, I won't swing my ego around too much with that though. Um, yeah, I, I'm a co-director, co-company director for um, The Growth House, which is a theatre company based in the north of England. Um, we're a collective of internationally trained performers that are just feeding into each other uh, creatively, uh, trying to find a way to create really cool stuff, uh, really cool theatre and different types of film and different, um, you know, different forms of writing. And trying to create, a, a, you know, a, an environment where other creatives can come and be themselves uh, in a very particular, in a particular structure that we believe, you know, as a philosophy, can create really good, really good art and, uh, you know, avoid any of the unnecessary rubbish that goes along with being a performer and being in a rehearsal room. As those of us who know, I know Marcus, you're a dancer, so I know you uh, you understand this implicitly, is sometimes rehearsal rooms or, uh, or production uh, meetings or anything like that can be very, can almost be a bit toxic themselves. So I'm taking the air out of that and creating new stuff. Um, I also work for a company called the On Top of the World Project, 
And that is an organization in the south of Manchester that works with uh, older communities that live in isolation or experience, you know, a lack of opportunities. And we create social uh, places for them and engage them through the arts to, you know, try and cheer people up and signpost people in the in the right way. Um, other than that, I'm a lover. I'm a happy person. Um, have ups and downs of my own, but I've got a very good support network that takes care of me. So I'm a very, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. That's who the heck I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And leading from that, one of the projects that you've been doing or, or, or looking into recently is obviously the whole toxic masculinity side of things. Now, what were, how did that start? So um, Sam Dunstan, who's one of our uh, company directors, um, he uh, is from Doncaster. He had a question. He His process is he always starts with a very big question. And it was, what is it like to be a working class man in the north of England today? Um, and from that, he got in touch with me. Big respect to you as well, Stephen. Blessings. Thank you. Um, yeah, we started with this question. Sam was amazing. He picked, handpicked some very particular people and we all came together and spent uh, two weeks together and it was magic it was magic from the moment we got together um we wanted to look specifically looking at the mental health crisis uh in relation to men and also looking at the suicide the disproportionate suicide rate in men and trying to find out why that is happening and why you know what is what are the causes of that um needless to say within that uh that uh, journey uh, in that and that R and D, um, you have in order to mine this information, not just sociologically, we have to look at ourselves as well, um, and kind of mine the the nonsense and the BS that's that's within as well uh, that you know we we were talking about in terms of toxic masculinity. Um, that brought the cast really close together, and the. The kind of the connections that were made were very different to say other artistic environments that I've been in. So we it was immediately we knew something special was happening in the space that we were finding vulnerability in ourselves that we didn't expect. And then that kind of just snowballed. It really just snowballed into kind of we're we're obsessed with this now. That turned into the growth house becoming a much bigger company. Our collaborators have been, you know, far and why many different types of people trying to work out exactly why what is what is happening what has been the case for men for a long time and how you know how are we how have we ended up where we are today and why is loneliness why is suicide why is mental health and depression so prevalent in a lot of of working class men and not just that we've realized that though we're looking at it from a certain type of bracket that those brackets could go much, much, much further. And we try, we're try, we trying to mine and understand what that is um, slowly. So it's still a work in progress. We're, we're still, we've just done a sharing at the Roundabout Theatre as a part of the Payne's Plough Theatre Company, the Roundabout Festival. And that went amazingly. So we're, we're really, really close to turning this into a full performance, into, um, into something that we'll tour uh, sometime next year, hopefully. But we're really excited and it's been really, really good so far. Uh, opened a lot of boxes for me uh, and, you know, relationships to the men in my family. And then, of course, uh, you know, it's just it's just beautiful been so far. So hopefully we can share some of that with you soon. But that's that's kind of how it started. Um, and yeah, now we're in that that kind of staging, finding funding for major, major stuff. So fingers crossed that will be coming very, very soon. Keep your eyes glued to Growth House. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely will do. With regards to toxic masculinity, a lot of people have a misconception about what classifies as toxic masculinity. They feel as though it's it's something that it's not, if, if that makes sense. I'm just wondering, and obviously there's going to be a very, very broad, this is a very broad question, but can you explain what toxic masculinity is? I like to start by defining what toxic means. So toxic is something that infects or, uh, or uh, degenerates the things or the organic things around it. 
Um, in terms of, we, we know what behavior is, <laughs> so we won't patronize anyone with that. But we'll, toxic masculinity is a set of behaviors that exist within some men, uh, and to some degree, a lot of people uh, would argue that it's similar to like privilege, um, especially in terms of the BLM uh, discussions, like even if you're born in a very unprivileged place you're, and you're white, you're still born with privilege. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a similar thing. A lot of men might not necessarily display, uh, you know, toxic masculine um, behaviors, but might still have ideas or idealisms that are rooted in patriarchy and in patriarchal rule that is handed down and inherit this this kind of privilege, inherit uh, toxic masculinity. Um, a specific set of behaviors. So it isn't to say that being a man is a bad thing, nor is masculinity a bad thing. Um, these are, you know, these are traditions that set the boundaries for how people in specific genders act. And up until recently, uh, you know, relatively, those things have kind of stood strong and, and, and fitted for a very long time for what society needs those to be. But now with the death of monoculture, with the death of, you know, the alpha male stereotype, or what I, what I would rather say is, excuse me, I, I won't swear, um, the people not putting up with that BS anymore, do you know what I mean? And fighting back against it. You know, it's there's a complete dynamic shift in terms of societal, of the societal structure that is masculinity. Um, you've got people like Nigel Farage who are feeling that is attack against themselves. I can't be the person that I want to be or have been told I can be uh, and having a hissy fit about it. <laughs> um, but there are more, more detailed things in terms of that, you know, a lot of men feel a lack of identity and a lack of purpose nowadays, but that's slightly different uh, as a conversation probably for a little bit later. But in terms of what toxic masculinity is, which I always, I have to write these down because I am by no means an authority on all of this kind of stuff. Um, but for instance, toxic masculine behaviors might be emotional detachment, um, hyper competitiveness, aggression, intimidation, violence, sexual objectification, it's, it's huge everyday stuff, uh, sexual predatory. These uh, can manifest in different ways. They can be very avert, and we see a lot of that in media, in a lot of films, in a lot of music, um, you know, a lot of art. You see a lot of this, but the everydayness is the thing that we're most particularly interested with at the growth house is understanding what are the micro things that go on in the general straight male um, working class experience. What happens every day that you know is really where the toxicity lies, and not necessarily making the big those bigger pictures as grand as they might be it's the everyday stuff that makes the makes the huge difference you know um part of what we're trying to do at growth house is identify what these little blocks are uh within the you know this you know what masculinity might be in terms of a structure and then how do we take them out and what happens when you take that out you know how do you what happens if you remove the sexual sexual objectification uh, identity of 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 masculinity, uh, and 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 how does that have a knock-on effect? Is it detrimental? Is it positive? And by detrimental, you know, could that lead to more suicide? Could that lead to more isolation? La di da di da. And what is the price that need that should be paid for other people to have equality in this world, for the world to be a better place, including those who are affected within that patriarchal structure as men? So yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge question, massive question, and it's difficult for any one person to answer. I, I believe it's a, it's about a group of people coming together, a community coming together to decide what rules we should follow, which creates culture, which creates change uh, within society. And there's huge pushback on that, huge pushback. As you said earlier, um, watching you know being able to talk about a, a bisexual character in a comic book is progression for a lot of people around the world a lot of people some might argue and some some um experts look at it in the sense of it might be progress but what we're seeing is the white blood cells of the patriarchal immune system pushing back against it it might be progress but 
how much is the how much is the body fighting fighting against what it considers a virus you know and that's a huge overhaul and by no means within the project that we're creating do we expect to solve the issues uh or or really be able to go this is what it is that's it we think anything like that would probably fall short of the mark we're just trying to start conversations uh and, and be a part of them and and you know experience it ourselves and share it with other people that it might it might open some doors for some some people that really need it if you know what i mean yeah looking at obviously the son of super uh, superman who has come out as bisexual like looking at that story i mean one of the the main things that people talk about these people who are pushing back on this is they say oh it's it's just because we're like people are just trying to fight, so they're just they're just jumping on the bandwagon to try and make this character be uh, accepted in today's society or whatever. And they're not looking at the fact that actually that in itself, it, you're speaking through privilege. You're speaking from the white straight male who hasn't had to deal with anything like this before because of the fact that all of your heroes have always been straight white males and they're being in the relationship superman and lois lane peter parker and mary jane like all of those people they they have they're in a straight relationship and so therefore this is one of because there are there are others uh but it's one of the first heroes to have come out as bisexual and actually coming having that coming out story and this is a hero that people who are part of the lgbtq plus community who are growing up can then look up to and go i want to be like that this is normal for me i have a hero out there i mean lil nas x recently in the media he's one that people are slating to higher heaven because they're, they're like we don't want to see that. We don't want to like. We don't want it shoved down our throats and all that. Lot. But you, ha we've had to see this all the time. Like as as people in the LGBTQ plus community, we've had to see this all the time. And it's it's the fact that they feel as they feel like their masculinity is being attacked. That's what it is. That's what it boils down to. Go back, go back. How many years till to the point where being gay was illegal? Mm -hmm. It was illegal. It wasn't just immoral. It wasn't perpetuate. It wasn't just perpetuated by monotheistic uh, religions that had ruled this country for you know millennia. Do you know what I mean? It's you know it, the men that are, 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 I guess, not even the men. The people that are fighting back against that probably grew up in that time. Yeah, probably had that point of view that oh well, it's it's still wrong. It's still it's still evil. And to an, to an extent, I, I mean, I, I kind of get that. Well, I, I, of course you're homophobic. Of course you're against this kind of stuff. Of course you're, you're bigoted in, in this sense because you grew up in that time. But I'm, I'm so, for me, it's, I'm, not, I'm sorry, it's not an excuse, mate. It's not an excuse. You've decided to just settle yourself in this way of thinking. The, the, the toxic masculine behavior very much comes from the point of when toxic masculinity arises quite often, it's through the threatening of that identity, of that, or, or the undermining of masculine uh, tendency uh, or, or behavior, and you know it comes down. Uh, yeah, okay. So you've got you know you know hundreds of years of people being uh, you know subjugated and you know uh, hate hated and killed um, because they were gay or because they were bisexual or lesbian or, 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 or however. Do you know what I mean? Throughout that entire uh, that entire spectrum, but. Mm, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, hit me again, Marcus. What did I say? What was I talking about? I do this. Toxic masculinity and the fact that you know the the LGBTQ plus community have, have it's been illegal for hundreds yeah. of years. Thank you, thank you. But I, I mean, we're we're seeing that pushback. Uh, you know, uh, we're seeing a pushback against that. But I think you know. I, I really do hope it is a case of just continuing to try and continuing to fight against. You know bigotry and and hatred and and, and again toxic masculine um behaviors but and by toxic masculine it's not just toxic masculinity it's it's white knowledge structures it's yeah. patriarchy as a whole it's a lot more you know a lot more people are affected than just through toxic masculinity you know uh, the way that society is created and built needs to change from the ground up and that for me is like is that not how you know we've been evolving you know 
for over a hundred thousand years as Homo sapiens, and society has been evolving for so long in 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 its trajectory. And now, with the age of the internet, uh, with the with people being more connected, the way that we can the way that we we are formed as a society is completely changed, and it, it may it's sad it, it's sad to think that you know so many people have lost their lives and probably will continue to lose their lives in this fight on all sides uh, simply because of the way that selfish, greedy, um, ignorant, bigoted people have created this stuff in the past. You know, that's why I was so terrified with Donald Trump because if he's not a walking poster for this is what toxic masculinity looks like when you put someone like that who's in charge of changing laws and changing you know the way that we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis you're inviting you're, you're inviting the devil into your home you know mm -hmm. what i mean and we just have to keep fighting against that stuff and I, I really hope that you know by the end by our old age we'll be able to see a very different a very different world but i wonder i do wonder how long that will take you know it's a, a long fight i mean as you said it, it's it's build it's building from the ground up it's essentially unlearning the things that we have been grown up like where, where we have been made to feel like we have to act a certain type of way through growing up so for example boys don't cry girls have girls are can be very expressional with the feelings but as a boy as you you know you're a bo you know you're a boy you don't you boys don't cry you know you you don't need to you don't need to cry you don't get upset because you're supposed to be strong that's something simple like that that you think is just a kind of passing comment is actually feeding into this whole toxic masculinity to a point now where how many people around like male wise talk about their feelings talk about the fact that they're upset talk about the fact that this has really bothered me today and i needed somebody to talk to about it and i hope that you're available to talk to how many times do you have that type of conversation with people and that it comes from the fact that we are brought up to believe that we shouldn't talk about our feelings as males. We shouldn't be open. Well, our feelings, if you if you are open about your feelings, you're you were then branded as like back in the day, you were banned, and this is obviously not what these are some of the words that people used to say. So obviously, don't you know, shoot me. Um, but people used to call you a sissy, people used to call you gay or strange or queer or whatever, because of the fact that you were talking more about your feelings and so therefore you had to learn to hide those feelings and to mm. be that masculine masculine person mm. because that's how you were brought up to be and so you're unlearning all of that to then start from the ground up it's not a case of well okay well now i can just change and we'll just start doing it now you have to how this will go is that like males have to unlearn all of these hundreds of years of things that have been instilled into their into their self to then be building that back up again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was I I consider myself very lucky um, because I mean I am a straight white male. Do you know what I mean? I I, I can't you know I mean that is that's who I am. Um, and sometimes I feel very impostery when I talk about a lot of this kind of stuff. I was yeah you know, I mean I was brought up in a matriarchal home. Like my grandmother was the head of the family. My mother was a really strong woman, had her own business, uh, you know, her own dance school and put me through dance training and put me through, you know, you know, all this kind of stuff. I was, you know, my babysitters were were really brilliant, wonderful people, women. Uh, and I remember I remember Helen Noonan, who's a wonderful choreographer, is in Manchester. She was my babysitter as a young person. And she taught me how to braid hair. And she had really long, she had inches, mate. She was like all the way down here. And I, I used to braid it. And I remember in school, and this must have been year five or something. And I remember a girl, <laughs> I remember her name as well. She fell over and uh, she was tripped over by, a, by somebody. And the bobble went flying. And I grabbed the bobble. And I went to her. And my first impulse was to help her out and to put her hair back on the bobble. And I did, and I never lived that down. Never lived that down. Uh, I was called gay from the moment I became a teenager, like all the way through to like my my early twenties. Um, 
And to the point where I joined a, tri a take that tribute band, I was Jason. Just so I just answered that question straight out. <laughs> um, I was in a take that tribute band for ages, and you know, you live in the performing, art, performing arts industry. You work there. You're going to meet a lot of gay people. You're going to meet a lot of people from the LGBTQ plus community because um, it's a it's a lot of it is a safe haven for expression, which a lot of people uh, crave and find a home in that and, and belonging. And I remember the first day I ever did that. And I was about 17, I was still quite, a, you know, I was still finding who I was and quite uncomfortable, but still quite outgoing. And I remember one of the guys going to me, I'll give you two years. And I was like, two years, what do you mean two years? Two years till you're okay. And then it was like, for those two years, it was like, oh my God, I'm gonna turn out gay. What the fuck is this about? And it's not that, you know what I mean? I had so many gay friends, it, it was never an issue for me. It was never a bother for me. Um, but I was just like, oh shit, I'm not the person I am. That fucked with me for, sorry guys, <laughs> that messed with me really bad for, for years because my identity was in, was, in, was in question constantly. And what that did to me in terms of relating to people and how I communicated with people really messed me up. And, and it's because I grew up in a society that shamed that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's not that my family were against gay people or homosexuals, but generally the society that I was in was really messed up, but it was because I had links to the art world. It's because I had liberal, forward-thinking family, you know, who were from Catholic Ireland, but didn't judge anybody because of that and instilled views of, you know, judgment and non-judgment and acceptance of all people, you know, even though they were religious and Catholic. I was really lucky to have that and to be raised by a really strong single mother. Do you know what I mean? And seeing the effect that my relationship, that relate my, the relationship between my father and my mother and the subsequent partner she had after that, who were all very toxic, horrible men. Um, I, was, I was front and center watching it happen in front of me. And thank God, do you know what I mean? By no means do I, do I am I trying to say, I'm no way, by no means perfect. And I'm sure I've, there's, you know, there's always gonna be prejudice in everybody, including myself. Um, but working on it is a big thing. So yeah, I was lucky to, to kind of get past that kind of stuff. Whereas a lot of the people that I knew in high school, a lot of the people that I've met, you know, since, you know, graduating university and, and being able to travel, especially from doing this project, the people I've had to speak to who I have, you know, when I've put myself, not just in conversation with the general person, but then also when I've gone online and I've had to do research about incels or pick up line uh, culture, things like that. Terrifying, absolutely terrifying what some people come out with and what some people, how, how they've morphed their opinions. It's, it's crazy. I'm, I'm bored. It's not borderline. A lot of it is just sexual assault. A lot of it is intention to, to engage in rape. It's it's insane, and this is readily available on the internet, and these communities are much bigger than we would like to think. Do you know what I mean? So it's a huge problem, a huge problem across the whole board. Um, yeah, we have to just keep trying. We have to acknowledge it within ourselves. And it's a man's problem. It's a man's problem. Men should be dealing with this. Do you know what I mean? Like the whole thing with the Sarah Everard uh, you know, uh, tragedy. You know what I mean? I, I, all of the, the the rhetoric that came out from that saying, this is not a woman's problem. This is not an issue for a woman to take care of herself when she's walking down the street. She should have just as much, you know, uh, safety as anybody else's. This is for men to sort out. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the arguments that we hear are that feminism has gone too far, that feminism is now, you know, it's it's just taking the biscuit. Whereas what I what I what I believe is it's it's taking the identity away from men, it's taking the strength away from men. I see the feminist agenda as pointing the finger and being like da 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 da, and and lots of rhetoric from these men talking about how you know if women women should be standing up for this da 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 da. Well, no, women should be pointing it out. People who are not who don't identify as male should point it out and should be able to pro, uh, protest and say whatever. It's a man's job or somebody who identifies as male's job to clean up this mess and to sort this to sort this out. Do you know what I mean? We need to talk about it. And as much as I hear, well, you know, it's the feminists that are changing society. It's the feminists that are, you know, uh, who are causing the suicide rate. The idea, absolutely not. That's what Nigel Farage wants you to believe. 
He wants to point the blame on those people, not against the people who are trying to perpetuate the lie uh, that that men are supposed to act like this. And I tell you what, if they do act like this, I'll be able to get away with what I want to get away with, which is being a sleazeball, uh, you know, making money off the back of hardworking people in the UK, you know? Mm -hmm, definitely. Sticking on, on, on that, obviously, what we just talked about, when people are acted up and they are saying things like, oh, you know, the woman should be doing this and she needs to do that and whatever. They are speaking from a place of privilege. This goes alongside absolutely every single community of people who point the finger and say, this is wrong. So, you know, speaking, and I can speak honestly from the LGBTQ plus community, when we point the finger and we say, this is wrong, we want equality because of X, Y, and Z, it is the straight people, the straight, white, cis, male people of society who then go, oh, no, we, we feel like well, our rights are being taken away from us. And it's the same with, uh, you know, the BLM movement, the moment that they point the finger and they say, this needs to change. It is the white society who are saying, oh, no, blah, blah, blah. And it's because you speak from a place of privilege you don't understand unless you come from there. So saying to a, saying in, a, in the instance of like, young women walking down the street and if they're wearing a mini skirt or whatever, the fact that a male can openly say, well, she was asking for it is disgusting. It is disgusting. Like she was asking for it. She was what she was asked she, because she wanted to dress the way that she wanted to dress because that's how she felt comfortable. That was an open invitation for you and your toxic masculinity to come over and try and take advantage. No. There is the problem that lies with the self. That is it. That is the it's the be all and end all of it. Um, and we could talk about this for so long, and I'm probably going to have to do a part two on this because it's just so like. And I am going to be doing a part two actually. We're gonna... not. We're not. Uh, uh, we're not done, are we? <laughs> we're not done. We're going to continue. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> Like we we are we will for the for the listeners at home we will be running over one hour okay I normally try to keep it under an hour we will definitely be running over but yes we are going to be doing a part two on this because I've got uh, somebody who is a, a part of the feminist movement and I would absolutely love you to come back um, and we can obviously have an open discussion about like linking toxic masculinity with the feminist movement and stuff like that as well. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about because as I said we could literally fire so much about the like little scenarios like this and how damaging it is but we wanted i want to kind of steer the conversation onto the next thing which would be i noticed on one of the projects that you guys were doing at the growth houses that you were in manchester and you were interviewing uh males uh, and talking about obviously toxic masculinity and things like that and i'm just wanting to you i wanted you to share with my viewers and listeners today about what that project was about like being in manchester what was that experience like what did you learn uh, so that is the Let's Find Out series. <laughs> um, we went to Sheffield, Doncaster and Manchester and stood on the streets with a camera and a microphone and just stopped people uh, to have conversations. I don't know whether it was because we have a microphone, but 99% of the people we interviewed were on side. And that might be a case of, you know, oh, they're, they're interviewing. Oh, I'm willing to talk about this. That's fine. Yeah, maybe we just attracted those people and they were down to talk about it. And they were they were on side with it. We're like, yeah, it's a serious issue. It's horrible. Um, there were a couple of people that you're like, mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and and I, I wish I could be the non-biased interviewer. In the interviewing, I'm being non-biased. I can step away from that and go, you said some rare stuff, you. That was mad. That sounds nuts. Um, you know, there was one particular... Basically, we're creating uh, this, just a short video, a vox pop, of talking to men about their opinions on mental health in men, uh, what the state of masculinity is, you know, what it means to be a man. Uh, and it went really well. There was one particular story uh, from that when we were in Doncaster and Doncaster is one of the city one of the towns even it's going for city status if you're from Doncaster good luck um there was uh you know it's one of the one of the places in the UK which is highest for for male suicide um and we there was one fella 
I won't say his name. He walked up. He walked up. He stopped with us. Well, excuse me, fellow. We're just interviewing people about mental health. Would you, you would you like to talk to us for just five minutes, mate? It'd be a pleasure to have you. And he went, no, uh, I've got, yeah, I've got a meeting in five minutes. Uh, Zoom call. I'll, no, yeah, and just walked. I mean, we're like, oh, well, that was a bit awkward, but fine, whatever. And about five minutes later, we hadn't stopped anybody, and I saw him skulking back towards us. And he stopped and he, and he said to us, uh, do you mind if I actually get interviewed, please? And I was like, yeah, sure. What made you change your mind? He said, my brother took his life a few years ago and I care really, I care a lot about this actually. And I, and I feel like I want to say something. In that moment, what I've seen a man is go, no, no, let's not connect, let's whoosh. And then he walked. And he had a moment, he had a moment of clarity, he had a moment of thought, and he, he had a courageous, brave step forward into, into being vulnerable. And the interview itself was beautiful, and it was lovely to talk to him. Um, and yeah, it's, it's the people who, who are really affected by it, they, they, have this, they say, tell the same story, you know what I mean? Not like the people like Nigel Farage who want to turn spin it. Mm -hmm. These guys genuinely genuinely you know it, it was a, an amazing interaction so yeah that will be coming out very soon as soon as i give my time to myself some time to edit all that together <laughs> that will be very soon hopefully really put it out in winter so people can see and remember the sun of the summer but yeah check that out that's going to be called the let's find out series and we'll probably do more um as we go into the future thanks for that and i'm sure that when uh when it all gets post it out we'll uh share it all on here as well which would be absolutely awesome moving on to unlearning toxic masculinity or the patriarchal society that we live in how does somebody unlearn the patriarchal thoughts the processes that we've we've put in place how do we unlearn things like that <sighs> I mean, I can take that question in so many different ways, um, like philosophically or socially. I, I genuinely believe it comes down to, I mean, it, it's how do you get rid of any ignorance? How do, you, how do you unlearn any behavior? And I think that's through empathy. I think the best way for somebody to change their mind is for them to care about something. Um, to be honest, for, Say for men specifically right now, I, I want to talk because the women are affected by patriarchy and, and some women adopt patriarchal points of view in order to survive or so, to exist, to, you know, be themselves. But for men specifically, there are mental health groups out there. There's men's mental health groups out there. Uh, you know, the famous one is um, Andy's Man Club, um, Mind, um, which is across the UK. They're amazing. Um, you know, there's um, Men Up North, which is in based in Sheffield. Uh, there's, you know, there's um, Talk About It, mate, in, just around the corner from me. There are outlets for men to go to, to just discuss or not discuss, but simply taking a step to understand oneself better. You know, that's the Descartes philosophy of things, you know? you know every the, the wisdom of the universe is already within us you just have to go searching for it it's exposing yourself to new to new experiences and new materials dictate that we are dictated to by society uh oh, thank you Stephen. thanks for joining hi <laughs> Stephen. um lovely comments and david as well thank you um yeah w mm, lost my train of thought if yeah go into these places yeah, we're told to be a specific thing, to be a certain thing, to bracket ourselves into a very small uh, narrative. When you start to try other things that are outside of that, learn a little about yourself, you learn a little bit about others. And the more time you spend that around, da, 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 that will grow, that will grow. Trying new things, trying new things that you might feel uncomfortable doing, being brave and courageous in that. The benefit of the mental health groups is it's in a, it's in a group of people that are really supportive and are there for the same reasons as you. Uh, exposing yourself to um, the LGBTQ commu uh, community, uh, plus community is huge. We've learned more about masculinity through talking to trans people, talking to drag queens, talking to, to gay, uh, gay men, lesbian women, non-binary people, people who've 
who have been able to look at masculinity or have been within that masculine state and then transitioned to, to being female and can talk about it really objectively you know, I think exposing yourself to stuff like that. For instance, we one of our uh, one of our team brought their family to a drag night recently, and Dad's like, "No, don't like that. Not for me. That no, don't like. No, it's not for me. That." And had the best time of his life. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> because that's what that environment is. You're you're told that you were told for decades being gay was illegal. You've been told for decades that being soft or being gentle is is feminine uh, specifically and you know, you've been told for years and years not to cry, not to share your emotions. I'll tell you what, try it. Try it, my friend. A lot of what we talk about is with using male-friendly language and a lot of men respond to challenges. Do you know what I mean? When I tell it, you know, for, for everybody who's watching, challenge a man in your life who might have issues with vulnerability or, or being authentic and honest in their, in their identity. Challenge them to try new stuff. I guarantee they'll, they'll they'll end up liking it. They'll end up liking it eventually, bar a few situations, I'm sure. But still, yeah, expose yourself to new things, to knowledge, new music, new experiences, and uh, yeah, I'm sure that I think that's the best key. That's the best key. And talk about your goddamn emotions. Talk about it. Share that stuff. You know, a problem halved is a problem shared. You know, <laughs> a problem shared is a problem halved. I don't know. It's just a bit late, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, amazing sentiment. Thank you, thank you for for sharing that. Uh, also, you mentioned Andy's uh, man club, which actually, for those people who are listening to this on the podcast or actually on the Facebook show uh, or YouTube or Twitch, wherever you're streaming from, uh, we actually did an episode nearly near enough twelve months ago with uh, somebody from Andy's man club. So make sure that you go and give that episode a listen because it's super important. We talked about absolutely all sorts of that uh, in there about men's mental health. So yeah, just give, go and give it a listen. Cheeky little plug there. But yeah, there's been some great comments coming through as well. David has said, for me, it's the way men are meant to met me. Uh, for me, it's the way men are meant to be tough and not have problems or not suffer mental health issues Plus, the magazine covers of men with six packs isn't healthy. We have all different shapes and sizes. And completely agree with that, actually, especially with the whole body image type of thing. Um, again, that does feed into toxic masculinity because of the fact that you look at these people and you realize that that's not you. And so, therefore, you feel very um attacked, let's say. And so, therefore, your guard is more up. You become, you can not saying that this is the case for everybody, but people can become more aggressive or become more self-conscious about the way that they feel, the way that they look, et cetera, because they don't do anything about it as in speak out about it. Them emotions build up to a point where it can bring about, bring about depression, anxiety, bring out, you know, mental health problems with regards to body image and body confidence. What are your thoughts on stuff like that? I mean, examples uh, of masculinity from media are, you know, the further back you go, the worse it gets, you know? we I was watching um, scenes from Goldfinger the other day, the 007 movie, and Sean Connery, who I've always been like, he's the only 007. I don't care about the 007 mm. movie. But still, I was like, oh, yeah, cool. There's a scene in it where... Uh, he in who's talking to a man and he walks up with the with you know the 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 bond girl and and he goes say hi dina to da 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 and she goes hi and he says say bye now dina he goes this is man talk turns around pushes her off and slaps her on the bum as she goes past there's another scene in that movie where sean connery very dapper very handsome sits down on a bale of hay next to a girl already splayed on her back with her, with her legs closed. He sits on the bale of hay and then she goes to push him off with her feet and then choreographically the legs spread open, he dives on top of her and she's fighting him and he just, and really slowly and really strongly then kisses her and she just submits slowly. After fighting, she starts to submit and goes into kissing and I'm like, Mm. It has an effect. It has a knock-on effect. The six-pack, the body image thing is humongous. 
Well, you know, look at look at look at Marvel movies. And I'm not saying I'm not throwing shade on any actors in the Marvel franchise. They've done much bigger things than I have. But most of that job seems to me to be like you have to be in the gym 24-7. You know, you have to be working on a body to look like a superhero. And those are the biggest grossing movies in the world. Mm-hmm. More young people are watching them than most other Disney movies when they were when we were young. You know what I mean? And the way that has a knock-on effect, Calvin Klein adds the idea of the Adonis of the man who is like just don't get me wrong, I think most people in their lives should experience a point of physical excellence. I think if you should know your body, you should know it at least once in your life where you were just hodush. I'm yet to do that. <laughs> but I think that's a good thing. But at the same time, you know, loving yourself and being proud of who you are within your own skin as you are regardless of body shape should be the primary thing i think and it's not perpetuated like that it's really bad it's an absolute amazing point about the about the the ads of the six packs men's health and all that kind of thing i tell you what get me on there get give me a dad bod any day says tanya yes tanya don't get me wrong <laughs> like i would love a ripping six pack but shove me on it shove me on the front but will that sell any copies does that rely on people's insecurity to to make them buy it and i'm not trying to say everyone that buys a fitness magazine is insecure about their body that's not the truth but uh, i'd say it's the majority over the over the minority he says with absolutely no education into this subject but (laughs) take it as you will but it's true though as well i mean at the end of the day people who pick up men's health magazines more than likely are men who want to try in change the way that they look and they think that 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 magazine is going to give them all the answers i mean i read an article a few months ago now about hugh jackman when he was playing uh, wolverine and the fact that to get his physique on set he had to starve himself and dehydrate himself to a point where he was yeah where he was literally going to be taken away in an ambulance because of how dehydrated he was just to get those veins and obviously that yeah that that pause that he makes that iconic pause he had to do so much and he's openly said that he could not that that is is unreasonable he couldn't live like that it's it's unrealistic and another one zach efron zach efron has said about the fact that when he did uh baywatch and the the other films where obviously he he has no top on um all of those films that he's done he's had he's openly said that he doesn't do any, he eats very, very minimal. He's in the gym like 12 hours a day or whatever. Um, and he, uh, for, for those scenes, has to dehydrate himself. Mm. Just so his physique looks better. And it's it's not sustainable. It is not correct. But obviously this is the idea that the media put out for us. But that's not a creative decision either. That's not a creative decision. That's the actor having to fit himself to the mold of an ideal. For yes. marketing reasons, for financial reasons, because we all were already in that point of view. That's really shocking. That the whole thing with uh, with Hugh Jackman, I, I just find insane. Like now we have T. You know, it it, it goes back to same with the 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 film producer that was recently that was recently lost their life on set uh, in America because we have to use let's use guns because they look mm. more irresponsible. It's irresponsible and. You know, sadly, the film industry is, is built on a lot of that. But you smashed the gym as well, Marcus. Like, I have looked at your <laughs> and been like that. Oh, my God. This man is up at 5 o'clock in the morning going to the gym five days a week. I don't know. Why do you do that, though, Marcus? Uh, so I started going to the gym more for m- mental health side, uh, like side of things. And there was also, like... The, the aspect that obviously I wanted to be more fitter, more healthier. I gave myself a bit of a goal as well. I was doing Ultra Warrior, which is uh, in the Lake District, uh, not in the Lake District, it is in, um, where, where is it now? Leeds. It, it, it's in Leeds, uh, where they do Leeds Festival. Um, and it's it was how many laps you could do in five hours. So I gave myself a bit of a goal, but it, I, I went to the gym at like five o'clock in the morning purely for my mental health. Uh, I felt myself very secluded and very much on my own and not very, like, I needed a a, a release and my release was going to the gym and doing and being more active and and things like that. But yeah, I've 
I'm yet to go back to the gym. It's been a while. <laughs> I, I, I broke my toe. And so I couldn't, I couldn't go back to the gym for a while. And it's just, it's a slippery slope. I'm trying to get back in there at the minute. So yeah. I mean, just very quickly on what you're saying, you said that going to the gym is something to aid you in your mental health moment, in, in your low mental health moments. It's partly to do with unlearning a lot of the stuff that we've been learning is finding ways to cope with things in a non-destructive way. And going to the gym is by and large a very positive, constructive way of doing things. Though I understand if you want a drink, though I understand, but the everything in moderation and sometimes including moderation itself. But yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, good for you, Mark, because you inspire me at least when all that kind of stuff and generally you do. And I think you are one of those outlets that helps for me me positive mental health practices and active mental health uh, um, insert very good word there <laughs> <laughs> well thank you i i appreciate that i do i do what i can and you know whether that be uh consciously or unconsciously i i do a lot with the thought that hopefully somebody sees this and and can be inspired by this which is why and this is a little plug for my end guys which is why i'm writing my book uh so I, i'm writing my book a little bit of happiness and it's all about out of all of these dark parts of my life, I've been able to cling on to those little things that have been like given me that little bit of happiness that I've needed to, to get through it. And at the end of that journey, being able to just remember all of these happy things that have happened rather than living in that darkness. And don't get me wrong, the book isn't me going, oh, and I live this beautiful life and it's because I've done this, 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 this. And it's not like that at all. I openly say that, my life has been tough and I've had to go through a lot of things, but I'm through that now and I'm able to use my experiences to help other people. And it's not a case of that. I'm telling you how to live your life and that I'm not telling you how to, uh, that, Oh, this works for me. And so therefore this will work for you. It's more of a, it's a book to show you or hopefully inspire you to look, keep remembering the happiness that's out there rather than just, dwelling on the negatives and the darkness that's out there sometimes we just need that little bit of happiness ting, ting, ting. Available on all uh streaming platforms all book platforms uh, available in 2022 there will be pre-orders available and i'm hopefully going to try and get somebody to make it into an audible as well so they'll be able to read out the book i can't go into much detail but there is somebody who i'm speaking to like at the minute who is really up for the idea who is a celebrity who will be reading out my book, which is Oprah just phenomenal. Winfrey. Oprah <laughs> <And> that, would, <laughs> that would be absolutely epic. It's definitely not Oprah Winfrey. But um, I have a celebrity who I've been speaking to recently who is going to be, or hopefully going to be reading my book as an audible uh, available in 2022. And the celebrity is somebody who has been on this show before. So. Detectives, get your get your magnifying glasses <laughs> out. <laughs> so, all detectives, yeah, guys who are the sleuths of Spilly, there is quite a few of you because every week I get like emails from people going, "By the way, this is what I found, and this article I found this, and when you said this, you actually meant to say this." And so, there's plenty of people out there who are, will be listening to this. Uh, over to you guys, you know, investigate away. See, see if you can work out who my celebrity. It's going to be absolutely epic, by the way. So yeah, I've got this massive smile on my face. So I can't stop. But we, we, I digress. We're supposed to be talking about toxic masculinity. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We're having a great time. Right. We are. We're having an absolutely amazing time. Right. Um, let's let's steer the conversation back to toxic masculinity. So we've talked about obviously how the unlearning process has to begin. We've talked about the project that obviously you've been working on. Is there anything that we haven't discussed that you want to talk about? Um, it's life isn't easy, is it? Life is life is really hard. Life is shit. <laughs> it it really can. It was, somebody said to me the other way, I didn't ask to be born. But I also yeah. went. But the if you were to even think about the ugh, innumerable innumerable galactic, uh chances odds of you to exist you to exist in the way that you do your consciousness to be aware 
it's it, it you couldn't you couldn't work it out in a lifetime to to be you have such an opportunity that isn't promised to continue you know you've you've only got one life and if you want to spend part of your life in your pajamas sat on your chair playing persona 5 on playstation for 80 hours you go ahead my friend you go ahead and if are you, you wanna... are you speak are you speaking to a mirror there is that what it yeah. is <laughs> <laughs> and he are, you, time. are you telling yourself that it's okay to sit on the ps4 it and is. Play persona 5 yes ps5 thank you ps5 sorry ps5, PS5. thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> very lucky if it means you want a glass of wine have a glass of wine man if you want to if you want to go for a run, climb a mountain, if you want to write a poem, you want to stage a play, you want to create a, an amazing platform to talk to, you know, incredibly attractive and inspirational people like myself. <laughs> you do that. You do that. I, I just want to tell, I just, I guess if I have my moment, I want to say, take, be kind to yourself. Be kind to you and put you first as much as you can when you can. You know, because for me, putting myself first often involves making other people happy. That's fine. You do you. And I don't necessarily, who was it? I can't remember the person who said it. But the people who are going to hate on you the most are the people who are probably doing less than you. Mm -hmm. People want to tear you down in order to make themselves feel more comfortable. And there is a, a side of toxic masculinity or, or a side of masculinity societally that has benefited me in coming to that conclusion. I remember many years ago when I was living in Amsterdam and a girl that I knew, I said, you know, you just gotta love yourself, man. You just gotta love yourself and appreciate that you are you and you are here. And they said to me, sounds like a very white cis male thing to say. And I went, I mean, I just I just carried on the conversation. It was fine, but for, for about two years after, I just, I just thought of that all the time and I was like, wow. That's that moment where the brainwashing gets unlocked and you go, shit, wow. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm By no means am I, so there's a certain level to that where I'm going, listen, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've seen in my life. Do you know what I mean? I could write a book of my own. And I'm not trying to say that because, I mean, I've, I've struggled in my own way and, you know, seen things that, I should, you know, no one should ever have to see. But, you know, I've been lucky enough to have been born when I am, as I am, with all the privilege that I do have, but turning that back on, on, on the kind of people, you know, like you say, I've been through my stuff, I've come through that, and I learned some serious lessons about it, and, you know, I feel like sharing it at that point, be kind to yourself, be good to yourself, so that when you need to stand up straight and stand up strong, you've had your downtime, you know? And big respect to all the single mothers out there, big respect to all the all the women, all the mothers out there working their asses off, uh, you know, getting no time for themselves and, and you know, you know, keep on doing what they're doing. So, I, yeah, I, be kind to yourself and big up the single mothers. <laughs> That's what I want to say. It's not necessarily connected to uh, toxic masculinity per se, but definitely, you know, I don't think that gets said enough. I think you hit the nail on the head where obviously you talk about privilege. I want to kind of reiterate my thoughts on privilege. We, we hear that term thrown around that you have privilege and or white people have privilege, or straight people have privilege, or the rich have privilege. And we all have privilege. We all have some form of privilege. We all um, live and breathe it without knowing we have unconscious bias and everything. And that what I want to say about privilege is how you use your privilege. It's not a bad thing to have privilege. It's how you use that privilege to either inspire, educate, or help other people. We don't need like a hero complex. You're not saying that I have privilege and so therefore I'm going to help all of these people because that's a different type of, and, and something we, we can't discuss right now, uh, but that's a different problematic thing. What you're doing though is that you are helping other people using your privilege we've talked about it before on this show 
when we did the Pride Month about people who have privilege, who are straight uh, people within the uh, within the ally field of the LGBTQ plus community is how you use your privilege as a straight uh, cisgendered male or female to help educate people and to call out the things that are wrong and to try and find that balance and to be a voice for those people who can't, who don't have that voice. We talked about it like, you know, in the writer's room, in media and things like that, or in the teacher's, in the teacher's room or whatever, in the staff room at, at school or in the work, like in the workplace, you can use your privilege to be an ally. And it goes with this, with obviously toxic masculinity as well. And, you know, being, because toxic masculinity and obviously feminism, there's a, they're very, very close. Like talk about toxic masculinity, identifying patriarchal issues within society. It's very, very close to obviously femini uh, fe feminism. You're not, as a straight male, being under attack by people who are fighting for equality or for telling you or holding you accountable. You can use your privilege to call things out and say, actually, no, that's not correct. That's not how we say things. Like, you know, the the Larry lads who want to wolf whistle at a girl walking past, and you can be that person. You can use your privilege as a male to turn to your friends and say, well, no, nah, don't do that. It's, it's not right. Yeah. Like that just, you don't even have to say anything to the girl that walks past. You can just turn around to your friends and just be like, Let's not do that. That's uncalled for, isn't it? And you're helping people learn. That's You're helping people unlearn the things that they think is it's embedded in them, and it's not. They just need to Mark, unlearn it. Marcus, I was on the bus. I was on the bus going to perform um, uh, a couple of weeks ago with my partner. And, you know, we thought we'd get the bus, be a nice, chilled night. And I got on the bus. We got on the bus. We're on the way there, and young girl gets on. And I go, oh, I know her. I work with her. But I wasn't in the mood to chat. I was not in the mood to be like, hi, you okay? For like a five-minute conversation. I was just going to walk past when I got off and go, hi, you all right? And it'd be chill, man. It'd be nice. It'd be fine. You know, she gets on the bus and your man stood sat behind her. She's got, you know what I mean? Like Goldilocks personified, like inches down here, like beautiful ballet kept hair, you know? And your man behind her starts stroking her hair. Like stroking her. And I'm like, are we in a horror movie? What is this? And I didn't even check. But I'm looking at him and I saw it. And it, he did it. And I went, whoa. And he did it again. And I was like, my brain took a moment to catch up with this. And then he stood it. And I went, wow. And I got up and I went, mate, do you think that's all right? I called him out on the bus in front of everybody. In front of everybody. And I'm not saying this is necessarily the right thing to do. Do you know what I mean? I, I can hold my own in those conversations. You know, I'm from I'm from Hugh my side. Do you know what I mean? I can talk like that. It ain't no problem with me. You know what I mean? I can I have been trained for years of working in student bars and clubs and also in the current job where I'm at now of dealing with large groups of lads and knowing how to communicate that. So I though I understand, yeah, call people out. I understand why some people don't. But even it, but in that situation, like I mean, in the sense of if you see somebody, if you're five foot nothing and you're going up against the like six lads who are seven foot, it's probably not the best idea for you to go and confront these people. Probably the best to call the police or something like that, or, mm -hmm. or go over and stand in the way, or whatever. There are many different ways of doing it. But I called him out hugely on it. And then I I I because in my head, I'm like, why should she have to move? You're doing this. I don't need to take her out of the situation. I need to take you out of the situation. I went, get off the bus, man. Get off the bus or I'm calling the police right now. And I said to the to the, to the, um, to the bus driver as well. And he was like, right, I'm calling the police now. Man got off the bus and went off. But I'm chatting to my, ch chatting to my friend there very, very quickly. And then, you know, I guess that is using my privilege in a way because no one else on that bus said a thing. No one said a thing. I used my privilege in that, but then forgot I should have stayed with her. Do you know what I mean? On the bus to make sure she got home safe with my partner. Do you know what I mean? And and, and gone that extra level. So, you know what I mean? It's it's a it's a really sticky thing. And by no means would I ever want somebody to put themselves in harm's way 
to 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 do that but like you say use your privilege use your privilege to stand up for what you believe in and, and what it's right you know and i mean saying that look at rosa Parks. she was five foot nothing she stood up to everybody do you know what i mean so yeah yeah you've got to you, obviously you've got to look after yourself we're not saying that you know you should do like if you see anything bad like that you have you have a right or sorry you have you have to step in and you have to do that no you nobody has to do anything but what you can yeah. do is that you can educate the people that are around you that's be that's using your privilege like you don't yeah. have to necessarily be all mr fisticuffs or whatever um, you can just educate those people around you to be like, you know what, I've been doing some thinking. Let's do this. Like, let's let's talk about like the emotional side of things. You reaching out to a friend, if you're a male, a straight male, or whatever, and you want to reach out to a friend because you're going through something at the minute, do it. What's holding you back? There's nothing holding you back whatsoever. You, you are. Can, you yeah, it's you. It's you're standing in your own way your masculinity the thing that you have built up over time unconsciously has told you that you can't speak about your feelings there's nothing to stop you from pulling up your pull, pulling up pulling your phone out and going i'm going to speak to i don't know tim and say hey tim uh you're out to uh, we have a chat and the thing is is that Tim may also open up. And then you're then unraveling these threads of masculinity that people have woven over time to suddenly being normalized that, okay, now we talk about our feelings now. I do that regularly. I call people late at night. I said night owl earlier because I do. I stay, I, I will call you at about quarter to 12 at night for an hour long conversation. And I do that with a very specific, with a very small group of friends. I have a small group of friends anyway, but I call very specific people because I know that I can be honest with them and I know I can just splurge just nonsense and chat rubbish and be ridiculous with them and be myself as I sit just underneath this window, just outside. And that's my happy place, just to vent and just to, to get stuff off my chest. You're absolutely right, Marcus. There's too many people that just stay quiet about it. I've got a member of my family right now who has gone through some ridiculous stuff recently um, and, you know, keeps it inward, keeps it in. And I'm not going to go up and say, talk to me. Do you know what I mean? They have to take that step. They have mm -hmm. to, they have to come and, you know, you can be there for them. Let them know that you're there, but you can't force people into this stuff or else it's, it's not real re rehabilitation. It's not healing. It's, it's you flexing your ego and forcing somebody to do something they haven't really decided, you know? Exactly. Well, that does take us round about to the end of the show. That's an hour and a half of talking about this. And there's so much more that we could talk about as well. And as I said, there will be a part two of this. So make sure that you keep an eye out for that. Uh, there'll be part two with another guest who, as I said before, works with uh, feminist communities and is uh, very heavy within the feminist movement and so therefore it'd be really it's going to be such a good conversation to have talking about uh, the feminist ideals and of the yeah the feminist ideals and obviously linking that in with the patriarchal society that we live in and toxic masculinity that it produces but until then we are obviously going to say goodbye i think <laughs> <laughs> Boy, yeah, <laughs> but, I, but I'm not letting you go until you tell the wonderful people out there who are listening and watching where people can find you if they wanted more information on uh toxic masculinity, on the work that you've been doing with to about toxic masculinity within the obviously the growth house. Where can people find you? First, I want to say, Layla, thank you very much. It's very kind of you to say that I was raised. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be happy. Thank you, Deborah. Um, you can find us uh, on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram. We don't really do Twitter that much. At least I have no idea about that. Sam runs that one. Um, yeah, you can find us on there. Any updates or any videos that we have are usually advertised or plus up there. And uh, you can find it on the YouTube channel as well. It's Growth House. Um, you can find our website, www.growthhouse.co.uk. I love being able to say that. I just love to say I have a website, man. <laughs> um, yeah, you can you can see what we're doing. We have Open House, 
which is an environment for uh, artists or creators of any sort, whether you're line manager, actor, amateur, or you know, um, set designer, whatever, lighting technician, you can come and just be in a room of like-minded artists and just chat artisty stuff for a while, whether it's about the industry or talk about how your mental health, we has a big focus on mental health in there. Um, we talk about a lot about that kind of stuff. Uh, we're not trying to, you know, like like uh, Marcus said earlier with his book, he's not trying to preach to you. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're just there to facilitate a group of people, lovely people chatting. We take ego out of it. Um, we take, you know, it's chat and mouse rules, what stays there stays there. It's a really cool, relatively safe space to be. Um, we also have, um, so AMP, uh, which is a manhood project. The main show is Big Strong Man. If you would like to get in touch with us about that or find out more about it, you can go on the website. If you're an artist and you'd like to be involved in that somehow, you know, that's a big part of what we do. So email us on info at growthhouse.co.uk um, or via any of the social medias. Um, if, you're, if you know somebody who is uh, interested uh, in that kind of stuff, again, same thing. Uh, we also have finally our last thing that we're doing that was something coming at the start of next year that we're trialing right now is a thing called Playhouse. So growth house, open house, playhouse. You, you, yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, Playhouse is a, a workshop environment for uh, facilitated either by myself, Sam or Peter or all three of us or two of us, whatever. Um, we facilitate training and creative exercises for direct for dancers and actors and movers particularly um it's a very much an open uh, learning space um we take responsibility within that but we're also opening that up to other participants that would like to try their hand out at directing or choreog uh, choreography or to if you're a visual artist you can be with us in the room and, and let what is happening in the space dictate to you your your work or your process writers photographers, lighting technicians, you know, uh, you know, um, costume design artists, anything like that, graphic designers. If you want to be in a space full of creative people who are working, and I mean working hard um, from a place of love and passion, then Open House is there for you. Um, we're trialing it earlier this year. If you want a sneak peek, you can email us and try and get yourself a sneaky little place. Um, but that'll be open from next year, and that'll be taking part, place in Sheffield, in Manchester, and in London as well. So if you want to come down and get involved, uh, Growth House is, is here for you. More information on that to follow on our socials and website. So yeah, come and join us. For anybody who is listening to this via your podcast streaming service make sure you check the show notes at the end of this episode for all the links that have just been mentioned and how you can get involved as well just wondering if you've got some final thoughts for us before we say our goodbyes just that the discussions surrounding masculinity or men as a whole uh, need to happen, need to happen within male spaces and within male, uh, yeah, have male people speaking about this. Uh, we should take help take responsibility for changing the world to be a better pace by relinquishing, uh, um, take, get, getting rid of prejudice, relinquishing uh, privilege and understanding that stepping back doesn't mean stepping away from you it, it it means opening up more space and opportunities for others that have not had it so you know look deep within yourself uh love yourself and you know do the can't thing do the can't thing try if it's not a universal good have a really good think about why you're doing it other than that peace and love to the world if you are a rich white straight man do better. <laughs> yeah. That's my final thought. <laughs> Give us some straight white male working class people some money. <laughs> I'm sure good my place is, but to be fair, yeah. Now, it, it does bring us to your quote. Now, if you would like to share your quote, it's an inspirational message, an inspirational quote for my viewers and listeners today, and why that quote is important to you. Go 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 go
Uh, it means different things to each of us at Growth House. I think everybody that comes kind of adopts it in their own philosophical uh, way. To me, don't grow up, grow out is about that Peter Pan thing. When we are a child, you can scream for hours and hours and hours when you're a baby and never get a sore throat. Your body is flexible as anything. As you grow older, society dictates to you how you should stand, how you should breathe, how you should speak, how you project, all of these things, you know, how you mask. Uh, we want, for, don't grow up, grow up to me is taking all that away. Find that child, find that, find that playfulness in you, that, that disregard for prejudice, being present in the moment with yourself and the people that are around you listening to listen and not to respond, uh, all of that kind of stuff to create a, an environment that is just enjoyable to be in and playful because that's the best therapy I've ever had. It's the best therapy I've ever seen take place in front of me is people just playing and having fun without the fear of, you know, punishment for losing or, for, uh, you know, a prize for winning. No, no. That's the growth house philosophy. It's what we put into all of our work. It's how we interact with other people. I'm sure I'm not nearly as professional as some of the people that you have on here, Marcus, but that's a part of it playing and, and I, I can only be me and if if you don't think I'm good enough then blessings to you and yours but I think I do and I, I'd say the same about the people we work with and, and who, who work with us as well so don't grow up grow out growth house e <laughs> you're always good enough for me oh my <laughs> you, bro Right. Well, that does take us to the end. Have you had fun today? I've had a great time and I was nervous. I was so nervous, but I really, really loved it. And everybody in the chat is really nice as well. So I really look forward to hopefully coming back again for part two, if that's possible. But yeah, thank you, Marcus. Thank you for being a beautiful soul and a, a very inspirational person. And I'm not trying to blow smoke. Truly, you're a really, really lovely human being. Pleasure to oh. know you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, now get off my show. <laughs> you, are now, you are now free to say your goodbyes. Goodbye, everybody. Love to you. Love to yours. Have a really nice Christmas. Uh, if you're not celebrating the festive season, have a really nice winter. I hope you get to enjoy some snow. Uh, and again, love to you. Love to yours. Don't grow up. Grow out. Love it. Thank you. Bye. And there we go. What an amazing episode that was. As I say, we were going to run over. It, we just, it's just me and Chris. We just talk that way. It's just how we vibe. But it was an amazing episode. It was definitely something that needed to be talked about. And as I said, there will definitely be a part two of this as we bring back another returning guest to talk about part two of this. Feminism, meeting toxic masculinity, meeting the patriarchal society that we live in. That is, well, that'll be Chrissy's third time back on the show. And my other guests, it'll be their second time coming on the show as well. And that's going to be a really good one. And obviously keep an eye out for that. It's going to be absolutely epic. But we'll talk about this episode. This episode was phenomenal. Amazing. All the best words ever. Love it. Thank you so much for you guys at home and joining in with the conversations. Thank you so much for you guys listening to this on the podcast, just tuning in, listening into another episode. Thank you so much. It genuinely means so much to me. Yeah, thank you. Next week on Spill It, I have got another episode planned for you. We are going to be speaking with Heather Jean, talking about confidence through cabaret. Heather has a group that she runs called Confidence Through Cabaret, and it's about people finding a new way of life, a new sense of confidence, all through the art of cabaret. And she's going to be coming onto the Spill It Show next week to talk about where all that started, how people can get involved, and everything else to do with confidence with cabaret. And I, I can't wait for that one. That's going to be absolutely epic. It's right up my street. <laughs>
My name is Marcus Wright. When I don't do this, I run a life coaching business called MW Coaching. That's Marcus Wright Coaching or Mental Wellness Coaching. Both of them link very well together. It is a way for you to stop standing in your own way and to get the hell out of there and stop doubting yourself. Get that imposter out of your brain because you are worth so much more. You have the whole world in front of you. You can do it and you do deserve it. You are worthy. That, that's what I do. I tell people that. And I work with people from all walks of life to really help build their confidence when they've just lost their way a little bit. I'm actually taking on new clients ready for 2022. You can actually have a free four-week trial period as well. For free for four weeks. That's absolutely epic. If you're wanting to get involved with that, you're wanting me to come around to you and you know work work together to build your confidence. All you have to ever do is just get in touch with me. The best way that you can get in touch with me with regards to spill it, with regards to my coaching or anything, is via email. Drop me an email, Marcus at spillit.uk if you are wanting to come onto the show, if you're wanting to just give me feedback on the show, if you're wanting to send Chris some email, send it over to me. I'll make sure he gets it or any of my other guests, in, in fact. And of course, if you wanted to get involved with the MW coaching side of things and all you ever have to do is just get in touch. You know, that's what the email is there for. And of course, you know, all of those people who send me emails saying, yeah, you talked about this and this is my thoughts and feelings on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you want to correct me because that's what a lot of you do. You A lot of you send me emails to correct the things that I'm saying. That's fine. You keep doing that. That's fine. If you want to do that, that's the email address. Go for it. <laughs> I appreciate absolutely every single email. For more information on Spill It, for everything that I do, you can head over to the Spill It website, www.spillit.uk. Over there, you'll be able to connect with all of my guests, see all the upcoming episodes, and have links to all of my social media channels, which if you want to follow them, that's fine. It's just Spill It underscore Marcus. That is across the board. That's Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, everywhere. Everywhere that you want to find me, you can find me by just searching for spill it underscore Marcus. Simple as that. But all of, the link, all of those links and more are over on the website. And over on the website, there are different ways that you can support me as well. If you wanted to support the work that I do and this little show that I do, then you can do. Just head over to the website. You can become an official Patreon. There's some really funky stuff happening over there at the minute, including extra discounts off all the new merch line that is going to be launching as well. Click on to become an official supporter and you can, you can become an official teacup of Spill It. And all you have to do is just donate £2 per month, which is less than a price of a pot of tea at Costa Coffee. Simple as that. There are also things as well over there. You can go over to the website and click on shop and you'll be able to buy some of the merch. We've got these, the new line Spill It Beanie Hats. Some new colours are available as well. So make sure that you head over there and uh, click your, click your, click yourself. That doesn't make sense. Get yourself a, a Spill It Beanie. Speaking of Spill It Beanies, by the way, so weird. I was in the Manchester Arndale Centre a few days ago and I went into the elevator, the elevator, I'm not American, uh, into the lift to go to the car park. And as I got into the lift, we stopped off at like floor one. So I was on the ground floor. We stopped off at floor one. And then somebody walked in with a spillet beanie hat on. I had no idea who this guy was, but he had a he had a purple spillet beanie hat on because I saw like this little label there and I was like... <laughs> had to really lean over and uh, yeah he had the spillet beanie hat on so guy mr man who is out there who obviously bought one of the spillet beanies who obviously listened to the podcast because he didn't recognize my face hi i'm listening i i noticed you <laughs> it was me that was looking really weirdly at your hat <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the spilly beanie hats are available over on the shop as well. So just head over there and click shop. The other way that you can uh, as well support me is just by leaving a review. If you're listening to this via your preferred podcasting streaming method, just hit me a review. That'd be absolutely amazing if you could do that. Five stars obviously is, is needed. You know, five stars, no less than five stars. I don't, I don't want to see any one-star reviews. We don't want to do that. We don't want to go down that route, do we? <laughs> and last but not least, before I forget, the end of 2021 will be the end of Spill It Season 2. Now, normally, 
season two would have ended in March. However, I'm bringing the end of the season a little bit earlier so I can give myself a little bit more of a break. That means that you have got until the end of December with me and then we get a bit of a break for season two. But don't worry, season three will be back in 2022 because there's all sorts happening. There is going to be a new format, a new everything, new lines of merch, new everything, literally everything. So, you know, keep your eyes out for that. There's going to be a load more guests. There's going to be a brand new format. There's going to be, yeah, it's all changing in 2022. And of course, my book. Make sure that you keep an eye out for that because that's going to be epic, isn't it? <laughs> Me, I'll be a published author. That is so mental. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Right. And that takes us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for everybody who has tuned in, who has watched, who has listened. It genuinely does mean so much that you guys support me the way that you do. Genuinely, it does. Heartfelt, heartfelt. Thank you. And until we spill it again, it's bye for now. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Spill It. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time to do so. Spill It goes live every week on Wednesday at 7pm on Facebook, YouTube and Twitch. And a special thank you to these amazing teacups.